I'm working on recording. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to One Million Cups of Albuquerque. Uh, if you were hoping for something else, you're in the wrong place. Okay. Uh, slides. Here we go. This is our mission. The mission of One Million Cups is to lower the barrier of entry for entrepreneurs, providing access to education, resource, and authentic community connections. The journey to be an entrepreneur is a difficult one. You'll find yourself with lots of challenges and you feel like you don't have anyone to talk to, but you always have people to talk to here. So how do we do that? Um, there's a national and local mission. Our, nationally, we're supported by the Kauffman Foundation, which provides training for organizers and for presenters. So there's a consistent program. If you went to One Million Cups anywhere in the country, and there's uh, close to 200 chapters all around the country, you'd be familiar with the format, even though you don't know any of the people. The questions would be largely the same, and the presentations would seem familiar to you, even though it's a different community. So um, this is uh, the Southwest region where we're located. We're the only chapter in New Mexico, but there's a lot going on uh, in Texas and Oklahoma. I've been to uh, six sites now. Um, three virtually and three physically uh, to give presentations. And I encourage you uh, to get up and get on the road and uh, see something interesting. If you're an early riser, um, you can go to Million Cups on the East Coast, which would be seven o'clock local time here. Yep. Is there been an increase? No. Uh, I think no, that's, that's an old map. That's an old map. Right. So uh, what happened was during COVID, there was a little bit of a crash because some people couldn't handle going online because as you see, it's a lot of work. Uh, but most places went either 100% virtual or hybrid, and some of them have stayed that way. So uh, the ones that have stayed that way, it's very easy to attend if they're in a different time zone, and then you can, uh, you know, hang up and come here and uh, be here for real. All right, so what are the key pillars of uh, One Million Cups? These are presentations, not pitches, and, and we use those words in a kind of loaded way. Uh, what we mean by a presentation is, is the company's not flawless. You have challenges, you have vulnerabilities. You're opening yourself up to the community and saying, can somebody help me with this? Does somebody know how to solve this problem? And the community will help you. Um, that helps to make authentic connections, not just speed passing out of business cards and hoping that someone will pay you for something. You're actually here to bring something to the room and help other people in their entrepreneurial journey. So we're run for the community. The organizers are all volunteers. It's run by the community and we're radically and intentionally inclusive. All kinds of people are welcome, all kinds of businesses, all kinds of entrepreneurs at every stage of learning. Uh, that's our mission. I'm not going to read you the whole thing, uh, but this is collaborative. This community is here for you. There's an immense amount of knowledge, experience, and connections in this room, and you should take advantage of it. Um, you should apply and present if you haven't. If you have a business that's for profit, that is you sell things for uh, less or for more than it costs to make them so you can pay people in overhead, uh, and you've sold something to someone who isn't your mom, uh, you're eligible to present. We also bend the rules a little bit. So if you're a very early stage startup, but you've gotten uh, funding or you've gotten a grant and it has a couple of commas in it, we'd be very interested in hearing uh, what you're going to be bringing to market when you eventually do. And we'll sign you a coach and, uh, and bring you along. Uh, this is our organizing team. There is room on this slide for additional person. So if you're interested in, uh, if you're community oriented and you're interested in uh, helping out other entrepreneurs, uh, please talk to us. I'm Paul Sauter. Lisa Atkins here at Fat Five. They've been our host for eight years now. And uh, Eric Reds Whitmore over here. Uh, Adam, who's here. And Sonia, who's over here. So we have perfect attendance on the part of the organizing committee. Uh, we love hearing from entrepreneurs and we're doing this because of what we get out of it. We're not making a giant sacrifice to do this. We're all benefiting from this personally and professionally. So join us and here are our sponsors. Uh, Fat Pipe, um, our host for eight years. Jason Call of Photography, always making us look good. More than organized, organizing your stuff, your thinking, and providing cream. Uh, Foundation for Sustainable Living, our coffee sponsors. Noventum Custom Software, Donut Sponsors, and Vibe Solutions Tea for those of you seeking to keep the influence of the demon bean. But only when they're here. When they're, they're here. Not they're not here today. today. So you'll just have to go back to your old ways. All right. Thanks for joining us and I'll hand it off to you. Thank you. Yeah.
right. Speaking of breaking the rules, so we're breaking the rules today. I usually don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what we're doing, so well, first of all, November 10th are a couple of events happening. Number one, there's an event here at Fab Pipe. What time is it? 11.30. 11.30, where Miriam, myself, and Ingela, Ingela are going to be sharing about, um, what's the title of the event? <laughs> hey, Miriam. It's all about, <laughs> yeah, here you come on up here. That's a good idea. What is the title? Um, I changed it like three times. <laughs> um be a better you hire a coach um and it's all about we realized one day there was like 15 coaches in the room and a lot of people weren't really clear on what we did so we thought we would give you some insight into the difference between a coach and a therapist and then talk about how each of us approaches coaching differently and how there's a coach for every occasion basically <laughs> so a little bit of self-help a little bit of knowledge that might help take you guys to the next level right Thank you. And I think that's hugely important because uh, even as business owners, when we're in our own business, sometimes we don't see the forest through the trees, right? Oh, we never do. We never do, right? I sat down with my business coach last week and she like blew my mind on a couple of things. So keep that in mind. And also on November 10th is Startup Fiesta. So Startup Fiesta, they're inviting 15 companies to give a 60 second pitch and the goal is to get people to come and talk to you at your table. And um, first of all, is there anyone online who's here from the Startup Fiesta? Just me. I'm uh, online. All right. Any presenters? Oh, <laughs> no, you're looking for those. Well, actually, Jeff, do you want to mention, do you want to talk a little bit more about the Startup Fiesta? Uh, yeah, so this is our, our first like, you know, revival of entrepreneur events uh, post COVID happening. Um, so it'll be November 10th from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, at the Stimulus Center in downtown Albuquerque. Um, like Sonia mentioned, we're going to have, uh, actually, we're probably going to have maybe 18 startups now uh, and small businesses uh, doing their um, micro pitch, 60 seconds. And, and then we'll also have the, you know, food and drink and um, uh, by Build with Robots founder, Chris Zomek, will do a, a launch of their new product, the Breezy Blue. So oh. someone down, it's going to be uh, a good time for for everybody. And then uh, if you if you missed the application to be in the showcase for this one, our next one will be on January 26th. So if you sign up and get on the list for that, then you can apply to be in the showcase for the next one. And we're planning to do these maybe three or four every year. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And so, so far we have three businesses that are here this morning who are going to practice their pitch. They're going to practice their pitch on you guys. And you guys get to tell us, you know, you're going to be our coach this morning. Should we change our 60 second pitch? Do you have any questions for us? That sort of thing. We so, get to use the word pitch this morning. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. This <laughs> truly is a pitch. But what's, yeah. what's the practice prize? Pitch. What do you is guys there... win? <laughs> we have these notebooks I've heard about. <laughs> okay, well, we can give away a notebook to the, I think, that's oh. a great idea to the, to our practice pitch, but what's the prize at CNN oh, Ingenuity? Is there anything? Money, fame? <laughs> this, is, this is not a pitch competition. This is a, just a, a get together. That's why everybody's doing micro pitches. However, nice. uh, the companies in this case are going to be contributing raffle prizes for the audience to win. So oh, there'll, be some, there'll be some fun stuff. Uh, I think our, our grand prize might be a 30 minute sightseeing plane ride. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Someone here said down Caprio Rancho. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do next is we need a timer who is going to, oh, I am sitting right there you go. And as soon as that 60 seconds is up, you cannot continue. That's where you got to stop. So um, I know myself and Keiko, are you are you doing the 60 seconds this morning? Yeah, I could, uh, I could really All right. And <laughs> Allerpop CEO is here. Yes, our founder. All right. Awesome. Is that anybody else? Is that it? He's he's worked for CNN. <laughs> All right, so there's three of us at least. So, 
Sonia, do you want to go first? I will. I will go first. All right. <laughs> I'll tell you when to start. Okay. Okay. Ready, set, go. I'm Sonia Doing, award-winning and best-selling author and CEO of Women's Thriller Writers Association. If you have ever thought of writing and publishing a book, I can help you write a book that people will love. I can help you find an editor that will make that book sing. I can help you format and create a paperback that people will want to snap up. I can also help you set your book up for the best SEO and market your book for success. So come see me, Sonia Doing. There we go. There yeah. <laughs> My pleasure. Oh yeah, you had 23 to go. So stay up here oh, and get your oh, time. <laughs> Ready to run. All right. Any questions, comments? Did she, I she has 23 seconds. She yeah, I that. put more in. Yeah, yeah it's good to have that extra time. Do you do any ebooks? I do ebooks. Should I mention ebooks yeah, in this paperback? Yeah. yeah, my kiddo is a good reader, but she's just all it's all Kindle. She okay. Has paper, so. All right, that's a good point. Repeat the question. Oh, uh, so the question was, do I do do I help people with eBooks? And the answer is yes. So I will use some of those extra seconds to put that in there. And uh, the next question was uh, right here. <laughs> um, I would maybe add you need to talk about shit that you may have. Oh, okay. Okay, Cliff. So you start out with saying who you are. And then you do my favorite part, which is ask the question about if anybody's interested. And, uh, you know, from years of writing commercials, I always ask the question to see if anybody's interested first. And, and in terms of a commercial, I recommend closing with who you are and how to contact you. Oh. And spending all the prior time trying to make people want you bad so that our ears are all perked up for that brief moment when you tell us how to get a hold of it. Okay, gotcha. Erin Fraser on Fraser Online wants to write a book. Erin, did she say anything that might strike your fancy to get started and hire her maybe to help? Um, the award winning. It'd be nice to know what awards. <laughs> okay. Good comment. May I make a suggestion? Um, I didn't get the the so what? Like I didn't get the barrier. It's not my field. Of and so if you could start with like, when I got into this, there's no path for me. I didn't, there's no rule book. I don't, you have to use fewer words than that, but you know, just say like my, so what is when I did this, no one could help me because I didn't know what to do. I got the path. I won awards. Let me help you a little bit more. So what? Love it. All right. I like it. Well, thank Great. you. Yes. So um, I think you're the first person I've heard, heard ever heard doing this thing. And then, but that's been a while. And since that time, I've had a few times that popped up some famous author, you know, national author was doing it. And I don't know, like, if it's on that pitch thing, but, but it'd be in, it's interesting if, if, well, first that, that that's a growing thing because self-publishing is, you know, do, doing it into a vacuum is worthwhile. And second, that, you know, that there's these national authors, but you offer something unique compared to them. And you've been in it for maybe longer than the national authors. Mm -hmm. And you've gotten some people published. And I, I miss those things. Or okay. I, I don't know how to fit those in, but that was <laughs> Maybe we should have you guys come up here so we can make sure the Zoom audience can hear yeah. your questions and comments. Let's go ahead and form a line. And I will be going back to this video on Facebook and watch and listening to all your comments. So thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, we'll right. back for a second. So, hi, I'm Eric Burns with Orland Warner. This is the Wembley Cups. Nice to meet you. Um, so, and I was a little distracted over there with multiple things. So, I, to the so what question, I didn't quite hear a close. Okay. And the close for this audience, I wasn't sure. Um, but I think in that case, it's like, so if you want to write a book and get it published, or so if you want to, please see me afterwards, because this is like a see me pitch. I think since you're not actually looking for investment, yeah. but whatever it is, I wanted more of a call to action. See me after, do something. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. love it. <laughs> Hi, Hi, I'm Allison. Okay. Um, one of the things that I was looking for was I worked with 25 people, and of that 25, 24 have gone to, on to win award after award after award after awards. So then I would know that 
you're going to help me get an award. All right. <laughs> All right. I like it. <laughs> I don't know if you have time, but I've also thought about publishing children's books. And part of my incentive was that I'm probably not going to get signed up by a major book deal. <laughs> and also, it's I think I'm going to make more money if I just like do the process myself rather than having what 30, 40 percent of all the money goes to the publisher. Is that yeah really I'll, accurate? Uh, about yeah. So I don't know if you want to just touch on the benefits of self-publishing. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, lots of great comments. I do want to. Oh, Paul's um, writing his down. Oh, he's critiquing <laughs> you in writing, and he's off camera, so nobody can see him. Do you need a sharp? But it's point? very important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul. Okay. For writers who know how to write a book but struggle with getting through the publishing system. The Women's Thriller Writers Association provides training to help you get your book to readers. Unlike working with a conventional publisher, the Women's Thriller Writer Association empowers you. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That's a great code. I like that. He's a All right. good one-liner writer. He's, yeah, he's a good one-liner writer. It doesn't really focus on publishing. Well, so yeah. you want to focus on both? Uh, so my coach, who is brilliant, um, but she's also really good friends with, uh, what's his name? Something Chandler. And Chandler spends like $10,000 a month advertising about self-publishing. And so, and she was looking at what I do. And actually what I do is really before that, it's really about writing the best book and then marketing and setting things up like your keywords on Amazon and your categories and, and making sure that it's, people are going to find it. So she told me, don't focus on self-publishing because I'll never be Chandler, who's her friend, uh, on, on self-publishing advertising. But I need to focus on, so, so she renamed my, my course, the Page Turner Academy, which is just another reason why you should hire a coach because she's brilliant. Yeah. Um, so my focus is not just on the publishing, it's creating something that's amazing. Yeah. So start yeah. to finish. It's like the setting up yeah. for success. Yes. Yeah. So thank you all very much. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. So, you know, let's figure out how to fit it all in there. And I, I like your, your help there, Paul. All right. So next up, we're going to go ahead and have, I'm sorry, is Cliff. it Cliff? Cliff? Mr. Hahn, come on up. Come on up for our pops. This is cool. <laughs> Welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia, for the invitation. Oh. I'm okay. Ready, set, go. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Cliff Hine. I'm the founder and CEO of Ella Pops Corporation. So, if you have allergy, this is for you. Ella Pops is prebiotic Ella Pop that give you allergy relief that lasts for month to years. So I invented Allopops after studying myself for three years and found the cause of allergies. So the product has worked for me, my son, and more than 10,000 of other customers. So the product currently has been protected by six US patents. So our phase two clinical trial have confirmed that Allopops is effective and safe to use. Our next step is to open national market, starting with fundraising on WeFounder in about a month. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> nice. I love this product. I haven't had to use it, but I've heard people use it successfully and get rid of their allergies. All right. Any questions? Yes. Do you have any credentials? Are you a doctor or? Oh, yeah. My background is actually, uh, I come from a rich background. I was a biologist. I worked in the Los Alamos National Lab for 22 years. Before that, I had uh, worked in a hospital for four years. I graduated from medical school. So, so that's where my background. 
Did you develop this at Los Alamos or is it your? It's actually your... on my private time. Good. So, yeah. But uh, of course, the work experience, study human genome, micro, mm -hmm. bacteria, things like that, those all trained me to do the research on myself. Hi, I wanted to ask you, so did you get to say everything you wanted to say or was there more you were gonna say there? Uh, say about the product. Uh, oh, well, your 60 seconds, at the end of your 60 seconds, it looked like you were gonna still keep going. Oh, else? that's, that's, there's only one sentence about that, I think. <laughs> one sentence left, but I think that's, that's the thing that we plan to raise $1 million with pre-evaluation of a million. That's about it. So I can cut maybe one sentence in the middle or, <laughs> or maybe speed up actually. Yeah. I feel my uh, pause in the middle. There's a good, I need a little breath, breath <laughs> exercise, I guess. I can, that sentence I can put it in for sure. Awesome. <laughs> so. okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, just speeding it up just a little bit, uh, <laughs> but amazing, amazing yeah, product. Yeah. My, yeah, let me I, go back and forth. So okay. uh, Jeff, uh, go ahead and ask your question or make your comment. Hey, Cliff. Um, so I think you have an opportunity here to put some punch at the beginning by doing a little bit of an audience engagement and just say, who here suffers from allergies? Okay. Yes. What if you could relieve your allergies for one month to a year by just sucking on a lollipop? Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Sounds like a good one-liner. All right. Come on up. Okay, hi. I was actually going to ask what the product was. I heard Allerpop. I wasn't sure. I come from the Midwest if it was a drink or if it was a <laughs> oh, sucker okay. or something. So it would be cool if you had a visual like Allerpop. And then also the other thing I was thinking of was um, you could play on people's mistrust of big pharma uh -huh. by contrasting yourself, by saying, this is developed by a real person by someone who has suffered from allergies, uh -huh. who is not part of Big Pharma. I don't know if you're planning on selling to them, <laughs> but um, it might be something that you could, in the beginning at least, kind of contrast and make it more mm, trustable. Okay, okay. all right. <laughs> Sue Thank Palazzi, you. Thank you. go ahead and ask your question. You're up here. Hi, Cliff. Um, does this address all allergies? Are these just airborne allergies or can it also address food allergies or is that something you're planning down the way? Yeah, primarily it was developed for airborne allergies. Uh, after the, next, the last several years, people use it, try that. And the feedback is the some of the food allergy. It works for that as well. For example, one of our customer come back and say, she can drink wine. Yay. Yeah. So before that, <laughs> she, usually, she usually had the normal lips and growth things like that after drinking one, but that disappeared afterwards. So Jeff's also suggesting that you drop corporation because he says Allerpop can stand alone mm -hmm. as a brand. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, right. all right. So save yourself a word there and add it yeah. somewhere. Okay, else. thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Paul Sutter, founder and chief scientific officer of Equacy. We develop and sell genetic tests for horses. So a couple of things. Number one, I love the idea of a strong hook opening line. So um, it would have the structure like what, and, and let me ask a question first. These treat symptoms of allergy or they eliminate the allergy? They treat the cause. They the treat the cause. And eliminate or people don't uh, want to like the word cure. It's actually, right, right. It's actually in that direction. But it's not yeah. like Claritin just treating symptoms. No. So it addresses the cause, right? So, so I think that's an important distinction to make to people because the people that sell Claritin, you know, know you're going to have to take that every day for the rest of your life. So you you want to say, okay, this is a this is a solution, right? Not not a symptom treatment. Okay, right? so right. that's really important. What if you could attack your allergies by sucking on a lollipop? Right, okay. something like that. Okay, and and the next thing is a note of caution. Um, in front of a general audience that does not consist entirely of accredited investors, it is uh, a poor idea to say anything about fundraising because okay. it sounds like you're soliciting for the purchase of unregistered securities and okay. the Securities and Exchange Commission does not look kindly on that. 
So okay. they probably won't nail you for a 60 second pitch competition, but if you break the habit right now, you won't form it and it won't get you in trouble later. Okay, so that then yeah, I should, don't talk, don't about, talk about, about fundraising, fundraising at no, all. Not in front no. of the Okay, no. okay. Not and that goes for all of you. Uh, and Brian will support okay. you, right? <laughs> okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. We'll do that, we'll save two sentences Sandra, and some others. <laughs> Sandra Hirschberg first in the three. Sandra, go ahead. Hi, I just had a question and a comment about the sulfite allergy. That to me is a huge opportunity. Um, as far as I know, I have that allergy. Um, it happened to me at postmenopausal, uh, not post, postpartum. Um, do you know if there is a test for sulfite allergy? Uh, test for uh, those. I think expect that you need to go to allergist to do that. Yeah. Well, we okay. Yeah. So as far as I've been to the allergist, and there is no test. So the market for that that wine allergy is done on Amazon through wine filters. And I spend a ton of money on that every month. And that could be an entire new arena for you if you're looking for a new market um, area. You can go to the wine, uh, wine stores as well as like, I, I buy it on Amazon for all the wine filters that get rid of, that help me with this, uh, the wine allergy. Okay, all right. Yeah, we, we are not doing any tests about that, but we, Consider something like test your microbiome and see if you are in the uh, domain will develop allergy or not because mm -hmm. those bacteria and their uh, metabolites in the saliva will decide you have the tendency to go that direction or not. So, so that's the things in the uh, next several years will that need a little more research and actually to study the population, what's the average uh, concentration of those metabolites in the saliva. So, so that's need a little bit of research. Cliff to Chadwick with Comunicaciones Coco Pelli. And it crossed my mind, you know, the image of Telly Savalas licking a lollipop. Anybody oh, remember yeah. <laughs> Telly Savalas licking a lollipop? And he used to lick the lollipop and say, who loves you, baby? <laughs> So I'm sure who loves your baby is uh, not something you care to use, but it did cross my mind that you could easily have a lollipop in your hand. Yeah. I mean, what a great opportunity to do the quick product demonstration while you're talking. So that's my suggestion. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. <laughs> Just gone, just gone photography. So my thought of look, if you're talking about looking at all this stuff, I mean, if you mentioned the flavor, like tastes good or what flavors? It tastes licorice. Tastes like, licorice. Okay. Yeah. Are they all licorice flavors? It's <laughs> our wine flavor right now. We will have mango flavor <laughs> and a strawberry <laughs> flavor. Next year. So, I don't like slot. <laughs> I do like slot. I do like licorice. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Sorry. Anybody else? Anybody Any online? Trials? Any clinical trials, Cliff? Oh, yes, we're done. The, uh, we had the phase two clinical trial uh, in the last two years. Uh, the results just came out two weeks ago. It verifies uh, LRPAX is effective in allergy relief and is safe to use. So <coughs> that's the main conclusion. Uh, we have saliva sample collected during the process. It has not been sequenced yet. We will do that early next year. That will tell us and verify uh, our theory. It is the bacteria in the saliva uh, did the work. So that's the thing we will continue to do that early next year. But the clinical analysis confirmed and finished. Jenny, where can you get them? Uh, on Amazon.com and Allopops.com. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Come on up. I, I would just say congrats on your recent press and coverage. I think this week in the Business Weekly, uh, you were featured. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Thank Great you. job. Thank you for presenting. Now we need you to present that one million cuts. <laughs>
Okay, go ahead, Oscar. Which one? Which one of you are gonna give us your one minute? Yeah, come on. Come on up. You guys should remember um, Ikoa and Oscar that they presented just a couple weeks ago. They have the one liner. Oh, are you just now writing it? You're just now preparing? No. Yeah. <laughs> we'll help you get there. All right. Oh, I have to time you. I'm going to be reading off a script today. Ready? Yeah. Set. Go. So I'm Kay Cole with Legacy Family Documentaries. We're a video production company that specializes in creating personalized documentaries for families to pass down from generation to generation. Pictures and word of mouth will always have their place in our hearts. But, uh, but Legacy Family Documentaries blend them together with visual storytelling to create a one-of-a-kind experience. These priceless treasures are created so memories go unforgotten. Solidify, solidify your legacy with us, Legacy Family Documentaries. All right, 30 seconds. We got lots of time to beat this stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, come on up. Is that good? No, you got to stay up here. And oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying, to, trying to sneak out of here. Chris, Chris Corbine, I'm from Activate NM. I am uh, setting up the start of the essay. Yeah, how many months of them this week? So, um, the only so you have a subject matter that can really tug on her heartstrings. Mm -hmm. I imagine the marketing folks can probably help you a little better than I can, but I would definitely try to focus on bringing out, you know, bringing back memories or, or reminiscing, you know, yeah. past and current, so you can have these in the future when they're when they mm -hmm. you know, when inevitably loved ones do pass away. But um, you have a, a very intimate subject that I think you could really key in on. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Jessica Troy. Um, I'm going to go off of what he said as well and kind of give you the writer perspective of that. Mm -hmm. so what I do. Um, really go for the pathos on mm -hmm. that because people love that whole like jumping in. And um, if you can create even a little anecdote or a scene yeah. saying like, you know, have you always wished that you got your grandfather mm -hmm. on camera when he was telling you yeah. whatever yeah. story? you know, and passing down that legacy because, you know, if you tell the, if you use like the telephone game, right, it's mm -hmm. going to change the story as the years go by. So hearing it from the source and getting that, you know, on a, a an indisputable yeah. version, um, I think what he was saying was, was perfect because you're getting that amazing um, scene right yeah. from the, the horse's mouth, so to speak. Um, and, you know, always going with, grandparents or your parents that's always going to go on the on yeah. that kind of thing or even like for parents or or you know family members thinking like did your children grow up so fast and you wish that you could remember those yeah. little innocent moments before they turn into teenage monsters that kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> but when you love to carry them around and you know put them in cute little outfits and things like that that's the kind of heartstring scenario that you want to bring up i don't know which way you want to go, I wouldn't go with both because um, that's just too much, but mm -hmm. definitely going and, and creating that that little scene yeah. so that somebody has it in their in their mind and saying, I need that. I want that. Sure. Call like this that. guy. <laughs> Thank you guys. Seriously. Aaron Frazier online has a question. Then we'll go to Eric. Oh, yeah. Aaron's are here. Aaron, go ahead and ask. Hi. Um, so um, as the tech evolves, like what Will you update the format? Um, I was saying, like, you know, if you made it on VHS like 10 years ago, nobody can play that now. I have my grandmother's poetry on a floppy disk, <laughs> which I just, I can't. So, use it. so are, are you talking about, how, are we able to retrieve? She's um, talking about transferring. So we, so we do work with people that um, do, do transferring and all that stuff to be able to get that type of information for the video. No, she means the other way around. Yeah. She's thinking you're holding a legacy. Like imagine you had a legacy on a VHS. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be much of a legacy because nobody could watch it. Oh yeah, yeah. So how how does yeah, how do we future proof? How, yeah. how do you go about future proofing the thing that you give, right? So mm -hmm. that it's still good. So okay, so like transferring, yeah, that from yeah, 
So now you're making videos, they'll, they'll <laughs> exist in the cloud. Come on up, Oscar. Right, Oscar. Yeah. And so what happens when, you know, the next generation Tech nerd. the cloud? <laughs> I just, so um, big picture is uh, I would like to have a server-based system where we do have a cloud specifically made for individuals mm -hmm. that work with us. So having an email system down, that person with that specific account is able to access all their yeah. all their all their information, kind of like legacy box in the cloud. So we, we would like to do that. Oh, we okay, would need like a lot more, yeah. but, a lot more structure. But, but you might want to. I mean, just maybe if that if that's an issue up front, right? If I look at like photos, like poetry was one way, but like because of cloud and because of things like that, like my photos now go back quite a ways mm -hmm. in time because the even though the technologies update, the cloud updates. And and you might, I don't know if there's a way to get in people's minds that a video nowadays is like a photo before and that that the technologies are helping people carry it forward. I see. So they could put your video in their iCloud or their whatever, their photo library, and it would it would just kind of transfer as it moved along. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, get that. I, I sure. think. Aaron was actually asking, can you take the floppy disk of her grandmother's poetry and add it to the video? Yeah, both can we ask her again what she actually meant? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't mean the future proofing it. Like your product, you want it to be a legacy and yeah, so. Yeah, I and I personally think the cloud isn't gonna go anywhere for at least another couple years. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and before format. They all said, so, Yeah, the JPEG's probably not gonna go away. So it's MP4. Do you provide the video in MP4? Yeah. So yeah. that isn't going to go away. You'll be able and, to. And we give options on how they want to receive the video, whether it's on DVD, like flash drives, all that 16 stuff. 16 millimeter. MP4. Yeah, right. 8, Eight millimeter. millimeter. MP4 is not going away. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Eric. Uh, yeah. Oh, Either way. Yeah, yeah both, both is good. So um, I think I'm not sure if they're both dumb weapons, but let's, let's just kind of see how it all plays out. Uh, so first of all, I always want to get some kind of what action do you want people in the room to do? Because when they're thinking kind of about actions, when they're thinking about how they're going to engage and whether they should engage, that puts them in a different place than being a passive audience member. And I kind of maybe going back a little bit to what Jessica was saying. Um, I like the idea of planting a seed about what is it in their current world that they recognize that their kids and other family members are going to miss. You know, if you've got, I've got young kids, youngish kids, I would have loved for them to be able to meet or have some knowledge of my parents. Mm -hmm. And I think making it personalizing it, but also kind of saying that there is that condition in your current world that you want to bring forward. I think that helps, you know, that's one of the ways to help get at that emotional connection. So it's, I don't know if there's any response, but that's kind of what I'm No, I, I want to agree. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what we notice is whenever we speak to people mm -hmm. and, and if they're interested, they'll always bring in their own anecdote. Yep. And that just helps out so much more because now we can relate to them on that personal mm -hmm. level. Yeah. Do you have a person in your life who, or something along those lines? Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I came in the nick of time. I know. Thank you. So much. <laughs> My knight in shining I, armor. That's what I call a good time. <laughs> My knight in shining armor. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> Jeff had a comment, you guys. If you want to save memories of your mama, come to the restaurant. <laughs> All right. Can I, would it be possible that I could practice my new pitch on you guys? Okay. <laughs> Only if you come up in front of the camera. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's see if this one works. All right. One more time. Are you going to time me? Oh. <laughs> yes. Come on. Let's make it real. All right. Ready? Ready. Set. Go. I was once told by an agent that no one would ever read an adventure novel with a main female character. I'm so you knowing I'm an award-winning and best-selling author, and I'm founder of Women's Thriller Writers Association. I've helped over 40 writers hit the best-selling list uh, with books and, that people love. If you've ever wanted to write and publish an ebook or a paperback, if you need help in setting your book up for the best marketing position, or you want to market your book to success, even if you have no idea where to start, come see me or find me at womensthrillerwriters.com.
feedback was definitely very helpful. Yeah. All right. Oh, you got a thumbs up from Paul. Yay. All right. I love when people take time. Yeah. Your little thing right after you said. You could say, I proved him long, wrong, I made. Okay. Right? Yeah. 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 Y
a lot of good presentations, so I appreciate those. Uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week is coming. It's just right around the corner. Uh, so I will point people to GEW.com. Well, I'm sorry, GEW.co. Um, it's a little funky in that you have to search for events and you have to plug in Albuquerque and look there. But there are several different events, uh, particularly the, the CNM events that are happening locally that are on the calendar, as well as the uh, the um, uh, the mentor, I'm sorry, the coaching event that's coming up here. A couple of things that I did want to share as far as other events, and that's that tomorrow night, uh, we've heard about this a little bit, but GDG, that's the Google Developers Group, they are teaming up with Girls Who Code. That's happening here. I want to say that's 6 p.m., um, but that's here. Uh, GDG is sort of reforming, which is good because there's still a lot of Google products out in the world. Next Thursday, be a better you've already got that. And I'll also say the following Saturday, Innovate Santa Fe, they have their sort of concluding pitches, presentations for, for their cohort of uh, social in, social ventures. So just wanted to mention a few of those things. And if you should have, if you were on, um, if you logged in through One Million Cups, you should have actually received an email this morning. I know a lot of people said, hey, are you getting emails? Are you not getting emails? Uh, so if you did not receive one this morning, that means that there is a problem. <laughs> and that's, so, so please let me know if you didn't receive it, we can, uh, we can uh, figure out what's going on there. I think that's all I've got. Thanks very much. Here's the link for Startup Fiesta for those of you who want to register for that. Well, folks, as you can see, there's a lot going on in this room and in the community over the course of the next week. I'll be in Seattle next week presenting at a, a symposium. Uh, so I'll see you all in two weeks. Wait, wait, who else is presenting at that symposium? Uh, Bill Gates is the opening speaker first day. Um, Francis Collins, uh, the NIH director, is the opening speaker the second day when I'll be giving my talk. And we're also going to have George Church and various other famous people that you don't know because they're scientists. So uh, let's spend uh, the next two weeks anyway on my part uh, lifting up entrepreneurship in New Mexico. I want to hear a lot of great news when I get back. See you all in two weeks. I'm going to be having my grand opening on November 11th from 5 to 7. If anyone wants to stop by, um, the address is on the uh, brochures. But it's 1408 Lomas Boulevard, uh, Northwest, uh, right on the corner of 14. Awesome. We're going to have a raffle. All right. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Oh, we need presenters so, so, so bad. Please apply. Thanks, guys. Woo